Good evening. I'm Alexander Rose, the executive director at Long Now, and uh, it's great to see all of you here. Uh, a couple announcements. One is that uh, we'll be doing the member picture. How many members in the audience tonight? Nice. Uh, so all of you members immediately afterwards come up here and don't fall into the organ. Uh, and we're going to take a picture right after the show. Uh, the other announcement is that uh, there's another screening of this tomorrow night at the Internet Archive. And as of an hour ago, there was still a few more seats. So for your friends who didn't make it tonight, uh, make sure they do make it to that. It's a fundraiser for the Internet Archive's fire. Uh, so you should donate to that even if you uh, aren't able to make it. But it's a, a worthy night to go again or send your friends to. And Stuart's going to introduce Rick. Hi, I'm Stuart Brand, Long Now. Um, <laughs> long Now is in part about taking the future personally and the past personally. And um, I learned a little about this doing shows about extinct species. And for example, the thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger, is this marsupial wolf that was in Australia and Tasmania. And in the slideshow, I show a beautiful color painting of the animal, and it's, it's kind of beautiful. And then I show a black and white photograph of a dead thylacine and the hunter that killed him. That's kind of tragic. And then I show some, the last one died in 1936. I show some film that was shot in the zoo of the last thylacine. And it's this basically happy dog just bouncing around and going up the wall and, and just being so alive. Film, video is completely different from still photographs and paintings. And that's why I think Rick Prellinger is the person who brings the past more to life than anybody. Here's Rick doing it. Thank you, Stuart. Oh, there's a red cross here for me to stand on. Well, I'm going to stand here. Um, thank you. Number eight. You know, every year it gets a little bit easier to MC this and a lot harder to edit. So, um, hope it works. How many of you have been to a show before? That's. How many of you have been to almost every show? Okay. Okay. Respect your elders. Um, so welcome to the 8th. I can't believe it's the 8th. Um, this show, more than ever, is made up of home movies, very special records, records of personal expression rather than corporate or institutional or government expression, made possible, um, made possible as part of this program by the fabulous film scanner at Internet Archive, which is unfortunately no more because of our disastrous fire on November 6th. Um, so uh, please support Long Now and support Internet Archive if you can. Um, what's to say about this? Uh, this event isn't as much, isn't nearly as much about the past in my mind as it is about the future. It's of course about these wonderful images of a city that is no longer and activities that are to some extent extinct in the body language and the look and the cultural geography of our city. Um, but it's also very much about the city that we would like to live in and let's keep that in our mind. And let's also um, remember that this is not about one San Francisco, this is about many San Francisco's that exist within uh, you know, the particular coordinates of the tip of this peninsula. Um, I need your help to uh, make the show better, to make it uh, more diverse, to make it more interesting. So please dig into your family home movie archives. Let me know what you got. We can figure out how to get it in here. Most importantly, um, as I think most of you know by now, this is a participatory event. You are the soundtrack. We are the soundtrack. You are the soundtrack. Yeah, that's better. Um, I'd like you to all yell yourselves hoarse. So actually, I'd like you to um, identify as much as you can to engage with one another if you dispute anybody's particular identification. Um, shout out ideas, there's really no, uh, 
There are no restrictions on free speech in here. There's also no photographic restrictions except no flash. Um, so have fun. This is 72 minutes. Um, afterwards, I'll be around to, to talk to people outside. Thank you so much for coming. And remember, you're the soundtrack. You guys are so good. <laughs> that was early 40s or late 30s. Yes, cow pushers. Very uh, old footage, courtesy of the Market Street Railway and Rick Lobsher. Yeah. Um, and we're just getting the, you know, the safety material out of the way first, showing how dangerous it used to be to try to catch a car on Market Street. Some of these shots are from a, uh, a film made in 1937, uh, encouraging uh, people to, to vote for the construction of a Market Street subway. <laughs> That's how long it takes to build things in San Francisco. No hint of a nanny state. <laughs> Streetcar historians, I'm depending on you. This is about 1934. This is an outtake from an independent feature film, a process plate meant for rear projection out the back of a fake taxi cab, probably. So during a conversation, this is what you would see. OK, Ingleside.
Yeah, Hearst Building at Market and Third. Here's a little bit of a labor parade. <laughs> Shot by a Hollywood crew as just stock footage. Ah, late 40s. This is around, um, when was that transit strike? 1949-ish? Uh, people are parking in the middle of Market Street. <laughs> yeah, right, Valencia Street on Sunday morning. Warfield Theater. Oh, okay, this is about 1978. Remember this, New Year's Eve, it's not allowed anymore, but office workers would save their desk calendars and throw them out the window. <laughs> this was before windows were made not to be opened. Outtakes from the, what, what's going on? Outtakes from the official uh, San Francisco Visitors Bureau film. I went back and read about this and apparently kids would uh, hang out in the, in the trash and try to put together a complete year of desk calendars. <laughs> I may be wrong, but I think when, uh, when uh, Robert Redford's film The Candidate was being shot, they used this as a ticker tape parade to save money. Here's the short-lived uh, seaplane ferry between Oakland and San Francisco, six minutes. I think I can. I know we've just seen this in the last couple of years, but... Better anchorage. Thank you. It's a bike lane. <laughs> Any day now. <laughs> Key system, uh, Oakland Mole. East Shore Empire. 
So for those of you who don't know, the ferry would, would go to that terminal where you catch your train into the East Bay. And in a minute, we're going to actually see where that is from the air. Has everybody gone to see the Bay Bridge Troll at the Oakland Museum? Highly recommend it. That was, that's the key system, the Oakland Mall down there. Our camera dips its focus to record for posterity the passing of the first Trans-Pacific Ocean liner under the completed bridge. And she belches forth her deep-throated roar in respect. At the same time, our aeroplane motor swells the singing saga of modernity to this jewel of steel. As complicated as a labyrinth, yet as simple as the highways of Rome, are these intercommunicating ramps that spread out their fingers to greet the motor voyagers of those who seek the mainland. The geometrical ease with which traffic uses to a minimum the duties 40 highway patrolmen who police the area. And tomorrow's motor vehicles can spin along on the broad ramp free from the dangers of bad intersections. <laughs> Anticipating the commercial attributes, the engineers have fully prepared for the heavy mechanized industries who will send their trucks carrying the products of California to the four corners of the globe. As fervent as the victory march was the cry that swelled to the bedroom of joyous excitement from the lungs of all Californians. The bridge is built, the bridge is built. 600,000 people, the largest single crowd in the history of California, jammed historical market streets 20 deep and hung precariously from the sides of the skyscrapers to spread multicolored confetti on the heads of 14,000 people that took three hours to pass the reviewing stand. The military forces of foreign nations, our own army, navy, and marine corps, and innumerable other national bodies march jauntily forward, chests rounded with pride, and eyes glistening with the joy of achievement as they paraded in celebration. Floats of every type and texture passed in review before the awe-stricken eyes of those in the streets and the dignitaries in the reviewing stands. Spectacular in their color and bright in their appeal were these floats. And the touch of the early West was reconstructed in our memories by this 20 mule team that added a thought of quaintness. San Francisco's famous Chinatown, in turn, dipped its hand into the oriental grab bag and let its dragon rise in ecstasy. Float, garlanded by the flowers of California, its grapes and its fruit were made more beautiful by joyous girls who waved cordial greetings to the crowd. The ingenuity of man asserted itself in many and varied types of traveling pictures of this epoch of our era. Not satisfied with daytime achievement, but working itself up into a frenzy that even surpassed the daytime celebration, Market Street gave its broad bosom to the nighttime festivity that, in the classical expression of the earliest inhabitants, was deftly expressed by the old gold miner who came down from the hills and said, There ain't never been anything like this before, and I reckon won't never be again. <laughs> sands of the shoreline was festened opposite fishermen's wharf by a garland of fireworks as varied as California's flowers. We have said each to the other in honor to this structure it is a job well done for every state in the Union gave of their industries to complete this bridge of a billion rivers. The Garden of Babylon, the Sphinx of Egypt, give their acclaim to this new work of mankind. 
The prayer of the pioneer mother has been answered. Her sons have built the San Francisco Bay Bridge, and we say to her, Mother California, we have sent you men to match your mountain. This is very old uh, home movie footage of Chinatown, about 1927-28. A, uh, a funeral in Chinatown, a feature film outtake, don't know from what, another feature film outtake. And a mysterious feature film outtake. Your existentialist moment of the evening, <laughs> or maybe this. Top of the mark. That's right. You know where we're going? Julius Castle. Unpaved roads on Telegraph Hill. working waterfront. Smoky, filled with uh, the tracks of the Beltline Railroad. After it closed, the building was for sale for some time, and now I think, what, it's condos or something? So a recent discovery, this is the good life on Telegraph Hill in the middle of World War II. And um, in those days you could sit on your porch or your veranda or your terrace and look at the, the working Navy fleet. This is um, one kind of uncut home movie from, um, but just the, you know, I'm surprised that actually Kodak processed this film because there'd be military intelligence and you're not supposed to photograph ships and ports and docks during the war. Um, so look here, this is wartime uh, scrap metal. 
Drive on Telegraph Hill. Maybe one of you can recognize this. Right. Tourists from about 1963 up at Coit Tower. San Francisco is for people who enjoy her sights and her scenery. San Francisco is for people who like motor hotels, small hotels, or grand hotels. Jack Tarr. San Francisco is for everybody. Sutros. San Francisco is for you. This is a home movie from, um, what do you think, early 60s? And this is Purcell's, a famous uh, African-American owned nightclub. This is the first building to be reconstructed after the earthquake. Um, this is a, something I had to put in. It shows an unfinished pyramid. <laughs> it wasn't always like this. All right. Let's, let's have an ambient moment outside the flood building. <laughs> I love these feature film outtakes because there's no requirement that anything happens. This is to show the old, was that the old redevelopment agency down there, the beautiful deco? And before that it was a, a USO type place. USO, a USO place. Here's the highly contested mid-market region today. We've just crossed Van Ness heading east, heading inbound. More surplus. This is about 19, ugh, I feel like it's about 48. <laughs> yep, the Twitter building. <laughs> All these great theaters. Good way to spend a day or a week. 
Painless Parker, the dentist. Ethan Harrison, right by the Perlinger Library. Yeah, just above the turntable. I usually, you know, I don't do the tourist cable car thing so much, but these are just so kind of gritty, these, these shots. Yeah, Polk Street. So uh, here we are at uh, Funston and Irving, now Andronico's. Does anybody know the history of this, uh, this car lot? The boneyard for, um, for old rolling stock. My best guess is, and I could be wrong, there's people around here who, tonight who know much more about this than I do, but 47, 48-ish? Earlier? That's the Irving Theater in the background. Of course, a fence is nothing to this photographer. <laughs> Did somebody ask what happened to the cars? Can anybody answer that? Oh yeah, a few um, harbor shots, and this was kind of cool because in a minute you're going to see something that nobody ever shot, I think because they weren't supposed to. This is about, again, this is 47, 48-ish from a totally different uh, source. Um, gulls, not endangered. Look, there's the naval shipyard. But you never see fun, a little bit of the industrial southeast. Anybody know where this is? So the knots and line shoving off well, for Hawaii, I would think. I like that. 
the cheap cabins. I don't know offhand. Anybody want to take a guess? Mid to late 50s? All right. Outtake. Hold on to your, fasten your seatbelts. take from the lineup that was. Now we're coming up from the airport in the early 60s. Candlestick. You can buy a seat if you want now. No, Mr. Peanut, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's why this is here, 76 Tower. Trucks and buses on the lower deck. Two-way traffic on the top, trucks and trains on the lower level. Yeah, that was not the bike path. <laughs> Change direction. You know, I could do a whole evening of just this shot. There's so much of it. Nineteen thirty nine, isn't that beautiful? Is that coal or oil, the ferries? World's Fair, Golden Gate International Exposition, nineteen thirty nine and nineteen forty. Does it matter? It's the Berkeley, so it's presumably a, uh, it's an East Bay Ferry. I, could, I can tell whether it's Key System or Southern Pacific.
China Clipper in Clipper Cove. So we had our World's Fair with, um, with uh, foreign governments and American government and state and city and county exhibits. And then we had also a little bit of this, more than a little bit of this. This is a family-friendly show, so you're not seeing everything. But uh, this was not a, uh, a prudish environment. Every day, the National Cash Register Pavilion would exhibit the number of visitors. The gateway, that's right. The <laughs> Google bars. Off to Asia. An island hopping. Trip. <laughs> this was this was the gateway part of the fair, the amusement area, Treasure Island. These films were shot by the uh, Ransohoffs on the day when the workers at Ransohoffs department store all went to the fair. Sally Ranch, Rand's Nude Ranch. <laughs> We're not going to go in, inside tonight. This exhibit was a, was more educational than sexy, more than erotic.
early footage of Fillmore Street. Don't know anything about it. Does Art just work up and down for during the Second World War? This is um, young daughter of the Hirota family. Dr. Hirota was a dentist in the Western edition. Um, had these films range from the 30s. Uh, there's a break during which they were incarcerated during the war, and then they come out after the war again. These films are now um, part of a, a wonderful project. The Center for Asian American Media is doing Memories to Light, collecting home movies and um, stories and background information from Asian American families and doing screenings and also making new work with, with film and video makers. And they do screenings around town. There's one tomorrow in San Jose, in fact. This is Fillmore Street. So uh, Dr. Hirota is back, and um, he's got his army jacket on, and that is the insignia of the 442, the most uh, decorated army regiment in history. Um, something like 7,000 purple hearts for 40,000 men. Made up mostly of volunteers from men who were incarcerated in the so-called internment camps during the war. Um, now, there are lots of people who shot high-angle shots of San Francisco out their windows, but most of them focused on the north side of the city and the bay. And what's neat about these, and I, I wish the quality were a little better, but they looked in every direction. They looked south. So we're going to see a little bit of what, uh, yeah. The, the, um, the mission Petrero Hill and further south looked like in 1955. If you have a camera, your job is to document your environment like this. Seal Stadium. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's history. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know where Seal Stadium is, <laughs> Sorry. Right, we're leaving Candlestick, one of my favorites. It's a, uh, a flashback from last year, but just take a close look and think about the, 
the light level of merchandising compared to today. Yeah, that's true too. We're leaving Candlestick Park. Oh gosh. Um, 63? Could be 62. But, uh, I, I mean, I love this. You'll see a woman that, you know, she brought Ritz crackers to the game to eat. She's not eating $10 garlic fries. players all lined up after the game. They sure did a swell job, but they didn't quite make it. But nevertheless, in the background you will see the members and their wives and friends uh, that were here today uh, to encourage them in a victory. We didn't quite make it, but better luck next time, boys. They're all excited. They're having their pictures taken. But uh, in a short time, we all be together Army again. And okay, boys. Cesar Chavez I think and this Patero. is it. We're just about ready to say goodbye for the day. So signing off for Argonaut Lodge. Boys, next time you have to get out and win again. So anybody know where this is? I don't. Mystery clip. So thanks to Scott Stark, um, the Sola family on Prospect Street in Bernal Heights. <laughs> Movies that uh, Scott Stark and Kathleen Tyner discovered in their house when they moved in. This is wartime. I think this is a victory garden. There were 80,000 victory gardens in San Francisco during World War II. We can feed ourselves to a great extent. Control freak. <laughs> Women are doing all the work as usual.
So thanks to the uh, Market Street Railway, this is a little film excerpt uh, following the, the route of the number 40 car, which went from San Francisco to San Mateo. And I'm gonna violate my rule and we're gonna leave the city limits for just a few seconds here. Oh, somebody would know more than I would. Mission Street. The big intersection at Van Ness, South Van Ness, Mission, etc., with the, the great arrows. Going out Mission Street. <laughs> Is this uh, top of the hill Daily City? Coming, if I'm not wrong, coming around the curve in Tacoma. It's great to be alive in Calma. That's the town motto. Seriously. All right, so. Thanks to the SF Public Library, this is Department of Public Works documentation of 3rd Street. A shot every 50 feet, six frames a second. From the city line up to south of Market. So look quickly. <laughs> Early 70s. Next time, I'd like to stop and visit in the Bayview a little bit longer. Yeah. So-called arts district. So this is our These are um, members of the Zellerbach family and their friends riding around in 1925. Tricycle lane. A little slice of life in Pacific Heights in the 30s. San Franciscans boast that their city has a moderate year-round temperature and the healthiest climate in the world. The fog banks which roll in from the Pacific are, San Franciscans say, merely invigorating sea mists, bringing health, wealth, and happiness to the wonder city of the West.
invigorating sea mists. So a uh, scout parade on Irving Street. I'm gonna, I think this is about 46, 47. The Irving Theater, uh, 14th to 15th Avenue, if I'm not mistaken. Sometime around 3839, new construction in the Sunset District. And the dunes are still out there. Out there. So it's this block or two of beautiful new houses. Are these Rousseau houses? And um, man, the, the sand is just blowing all over. It's Easter Sunday. But I love that kind of liminal build out. Another feature outtake. A lot of empty lots. You can see um, where the sand still rules out here in the sunset. There's about 51. It's not fully built out. I think there's 20 animals here, and no coyotes. <laughs> Did you read we have 100 coyotes in San Francisco now? <laughs> this is one of my uh, favorite pieces of footage. I think I showed it three or four years ago. It's uh, people we would now, you know, revile as, uh, as uh, people that use San Francisco as a place to party. But, you know, here we are. It's 1929. Prohibition is still going. We're in Golden Gate Park. There's the, the uh, waterfall at um, Huntington Falls. Don't feed the birds. But uh, these people did something which pops up again and again and again in home movies before 1933, uh, which is that they transgress, they drink. <laughs> Very popular topic <laughs> in home movies. You know, this is like medical marijuana. <laughs> little, little tipsy. <laughs> the camera is not even level. <laughs> So, shipwrecks, uh, what is this? This is the Frank Buck, or is it the Frank Buck, and this is the Ohioan, 37, 38. Um, we've seen this before. This is some new footage I haven't shown, but what's really neat about this is, um, this is right off, see those are seal rocks there. What's really neat about this is that it was a major um, tourist attraction for a couple years till it broke up, and um, 
And, uh, and this year there's footage to show exactly how much of a tourist attraction it was. You can still see bits and pieces along the coastal trail at low tide. There's things that look like rocks, but they aren't rocks. A little bit of the Golden Gate Bridge. I don't think people took as many pictures of our unfinished Bay Bridge as they did of these two bridges in that time. Let's see if you dream about this image. Uh, this is the G family, Kathy G, who it's from whose courtesy we see these movies is in the audience. This is her brother delivering the paper. <laughs> On 15th Avenue in the Richmond District. Here we are at Stowe Lake. And um, an exciting moment on 15th and Balboa. But the, uh, the G brothers and some other neighbors are jamming out on the sidewalk. <laughs> when would you say this was, early 60s? About 62, says Kathy. I bet it's when the saints go marching in. It's Kathy on the right in the shorts. Let's fill our streets with music. Playland, there may be a few of you here who don't know that we used to have a great amusement park by the beach. Sutros, after the... take from the movie The Lineup, 1957.
And the Sky Tram. We have some new footage this year of the Sky Tram. Went uh, behind the baths. Now it's all a wonderful ruin. This is probably very late 60s, very early 70s, just before all this was demolished. So um, due to an unavoidable technical glitch, this is flopped, but um, this is the women's posse riding down the great highway. I think this is great. Makes you want to shoot a, a surf western or something. Anybody want to talk about those buildings we're passing? Yeah. And those are the westernmost dwellings in San Francisco on Southeast Farallon Island, part of uh, Supervisors District 1, <laughs> 28 miles offshore. A wildlife sanctuary in the San Francisco Lightship. This is about 1962-ish. Touches every hand in parks where children play. Over the hills and all along the way, we're building a dream for tomorrow. We're building a dream for tomorrow. We're building.
let's hear it for the volunteers who made everything possible. Thank you, everybody.